the we purchased it for two hundred thousand, but mm-hmm. it had the seller had it appraised twice, and the appraisal value mm-hmm. was between what two ninety and three oh five. Yeah, two ninety six and three oh five. Right, so that was like huge margin. Mm-hmm. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Conner. My guest today on Raising Private Money, Jared and Tamika Day, they just recently started raising private money and they've already raised over $200,000. Well, first, quickly, a little bit of back, background on both of them. Now, Jared, he went to Duke University School of Medicine where he received the training and to eventually become a board certified vascular surgeon. Well, in addition to that, he's always had a love for real estate. He actually began his investment career along with his wife in 2019 with their first set of rental properties. Now, although still practicing medicine full time, Jared saw how the creation of wealth through real estate afforded more time to spend not only with his wife and young children, but also more time on his passion for real estate. So as a result, he has semi-retired from surgery to join his wife in their real estate business. Now, Tamika is the author of 21 Days to a Prosperous Mindset. She's also a certified integrative nutrition health coach and a pediatrician. She earned her doctor of medicine degree from the Brody School of Medicine at East Carolina University. So together, this dynamic duo, Dr. Jared and Dr. Tamika, I love calling them that, they've worked to grow their real estate business and they've seen fantastic results as a, uh, fantastic returns as a result. So they've now dedicated their lives to helping other people enjoy great investment returns through this means of real estate to create their own generational wealth. Now, you're going to be meeting Jared and Tamika right after this. Well, hello, Tamika. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, Jay. Hello and welcome, Jared. Hey, how's it going? Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, let's dive right in because our audience really wants to know how it is that you got into private money and all that. So, what did your real estate investing business look like before you started using private money to fund your deals? Yeah, so it, it looked like our first real estate investment um, deal really looked like us going to the bank and getting a conventional loan, um, which at the time when we started back in 2020, the interest rates were okay. And um, it was because it was our first investment property. I would say it went fairly smoothly. Um, so that's pretty much how we funded our first deal. Yep, I got was, you. Yep. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, that was the first time. But as we bought more and more, it got very hard to get <laughs> approved. And um, yeah, that was pretty frustrating. So we knew, you know, at the speed of growth that we wanted for a rental estate, uh, real estate business, we wanted to. Uh, Look at other options. So when we talk about raising private money, um, first of all, let everybody know, let's be clear, when you're raising private money, what do you mean by private money? Where are you getting the money from? Is this any kind of institutional money? Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, Gerard was the one that... um, put us on to a great program you offer. And we went to one of your live events to like really learn more about um, the options that existed in the private world of lending. Uh, And so, you know, we signed up for uh, the, the, um, for the program um, platinum plus group and learn how we could go about to raise private money. So, 
you know, um, individuals that have um, access to money through different means um, who want to get great returns on their investment. Um, that's where that private money comes from. So as you say, what we're talking about is we're talking about borrowing money from individuals, from human beings, um, just like you, just like me, that uh, so we're not, you know, borrowing money from, as we call it, institutional money. So let me ask you, and either one of you can answer or perhaps both of you, how did it actually feel when you were able to break through and finally realize that private money was the thing that you needed for your business? Um, I mean, how'd that make you feel and how'd that change your outlook on the business? Well, first, it was super uh, gratifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, to learn, you know, what we needed to do through the, uh, through the Platinum Plus program uh, to find private lenders and to get capital for it. But then the very first time it happened, it was like, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. this actually worked. The Platinum yeah. Plus uh, program works. And um, especially for the, the, the most recent purchase, that was almost it was it was a miracle but it, it was it happened because we we took the platinum uh, plus program we did what you know you guys teach us and we asked the questions we put ourselves out there and miraculously to me it, it felt miraculously uh mm -hmm. to us uh that it worked i was gonna say yeah that's the thing is like before that's one thing i can definitely say about being in the program i we didn't even think like that like yeah. to even ask to even know that that was an option right it was just what we the things that we had already known like go to the bank and get a loan and things like that and as Gerard said you know it becomes more difficult when you start getting more investment properties to go through that um channel to get um funding so just the bank channel, yeah. right. The bank channel. But so the program really just opened our eyes and like, oh, wow. And like Jerry says, like to even ask the questions and to yeah. even, you know, present this option or this program to a private lender. That was the amazing part. And to be able to close that deal using the private money was just wonderful. Right. And it's, I'm sorry. It's just so much we want to talk about. <laughs> no, go for it. It's the fear. I think it's the fear and not knowing uh, how to ask because it, it, cause you almost feel like, you know, you're going to like sometimes, you know, you think you're going to people you work with. He's like, hey, can you give me money? I'm investing in real estate. You know, it's, it's a, a totally different uh, mindset and, mm -hmm. and, and a different uh, standpoint that you take because you're not really asking for money. You ask, you're telling people about an opportunity. And that was like probably one of the biggest mindset shifts that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, I want, I want everyone to hear the story about your very first private lender from start to finish. I mean, who are, I mean, not who are they, not by name, but I mean, where are these people? Where do you find them? Um, uh, describe the approach and, and just walk us through the story from start to finish of that deal being funded. Yeah, so our first private lender actually um, was our relative, close relative, and we shared what we were doing in the program and said, oh, this is a great opportunity. Very natural, with no pressure, just, hey, this is what we're doing. And, you know, these are, there are different ways in which you can also make money, you know, from your investing with us or lending to us. And that one went well, and that one was $20,000. So that was great. That was one that we could use for the rehab. But our next one was the big one <laughs> that allowed us to make the actual purchase of the property. Um, and that came about. We found we had found a great deal. Gerard had found a great deal. And one of the main things from the seller was that he needed to close within six weeks. And so we were like, okay. And you know, that can be a little tricky if you're trying to use conventional um, <laughs> bank finance and to be able to close a deal in such a short period of time. And we had reached out to someone, Gerard had um, met through networking with North Carolina RIA and 
shared about the property, a great opportunity. And he was like, oh my goodness, I want to jump on board. Like I can be, you know, I can lend you the funds to close this deal, you know, using your program. So um, that was amazing because once we closed, we had about a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in the property because the deal was structured that the time was the main thing for the seller. So being able to close in such a short period of time was the motivating factor. And so because of that, he, you know, dropped the price by a great deal. Um, that was, yeah, that was probably like one of the greatest experiences that we had since doing this. Yeah. That is wonderful. I can relate to what you're saying by being able to close quickly and use private money to fund the deal. We get more offers accepted, right? I mean, I'm, I just went under contract yesterday on a house over in Havelock and that deal, the, uh, the original asking price was $270,000. Well, the after repaired value is 280. They're asking retail. And so we told them they would need to come down significantly. Well, here's why this story comes to mind based on what you just said. We offered to pay all cash, close in seven days, close in seven days. And they didn't want to really sell until August. We said, look, we'll give you all your cash. We'll close in seven days and you can live in the house for free until August. And guess what? We're buying it for not 270000 we're buying it for $141,500. Oh, and, and a big part of that was we're able to close quickly, give them their cash and let them live there for free for this you know period of time. So I experienced the same thing that you all just shared. And as we get more offers accepted using private money and paying all cash uh, because we can close quickly. Well, um, I know the list is very long, so I'll just let you all share what comes to mind. What do you like about private money? What are the benefits of using private money instead of, say, going to the local bank? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, one thing, because I usually handle this part, is there is not an extensive list of documentation, paperwork, like everything from A to Z that you have to present to the oh, local right. bank. Oh yeah. my goodness. That in and of itself. It I mean, I think we probably had four or five, you know, pieces of paper to sign at closing. And it that is just so like much um relief when you're not having to pull all these documents together. And I know we do it, but honestly, that, that is a lot of work. It, it, it can be labor intensive. And so with the private lending program, you're not doing all of this. Yeah, it's just it's pretty streamlined. Oh, it's my goodness. Yes. Giant packets. Exactly. Yes. Well, you know, speaking of the documentation, let's talk about that for a moment. So when it comes to closing and going to your real estate attorney's office for the closing, well, here's all there is. There's the HUD settlement statement. And of course, the real estate attorney prepares these documents. There's the HUD real estate um, settlement statement. There is the promissory note, which just lays out who's the borrower, who's the lender, what's the principal loan amount, the frequency of payments, the interest rate. So the promissory note, that's a page and a half. Then there's the deed of trust here in North Carolina. Most people call it a mortgage. That's what collateralizes the note. And then um, that's pretty much it. I yeah. mean, you're done. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> exactly. I mean, when I go close a deal at my real estate attorney's office, other than our chit chat, the actual signing uh, takes like yeah. less than 60 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the ease of closing, not much documentation. What's another benefit? Why private money? We can offer closings for sellers much faster. Yeah. And because of that, they sell it to us for a much lower price. And that is huge yeah. for our margins, for anybody's margins, especially, you know, with the market doing what it's doing with, uh, I, you know, I don't know what we're calling what we are in right now. Like, you know, it probably is a recession, but I guess we haven't said it. But, you know, it. it so if you're able to close on properties with, better margins, you're more protected 
even if the you know the repair value dropped by 10 or 20 percent. Uh, you're buying at such a low price that you still could keep going forward with you know this this exit strategy of flips. Uh, but anyway, so we're so with you know you know getting um, uh, private lenders, you can buy quickly. You could buy at a much lower price and buy faster, mm -hmm. uh, uh, faster closings, and it makes your attorney happy too. Yeah. And lower closing fees. Oh that. my goodness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. does your does your credit score have anything to do with how much private money you can get? You know, yes. that yes. was amazing <laughs> because none of that factor in at all. Right. Like it, it that was the part of the you know reality check. Like, oh my goodness, is this like really happening? Right. You know, um, None of that, like, um, that there was no credit score factor in, no credit check. It, I right. mean, it just, it yeah. just it's a game changer. Yeah. Another great thing is, you know, we uh, I don't know the last time we bought through a bank. It's been maybe um, I don't know, eighteen months. Yeah. But we had to submit this big profit and loss statement, mm -hmm. all these financial statements. That's the and point. then we had to keep getting back into the bank over and Ooh. over. And it was a long drawn mm -hmm. out process. Mm -hmm. It felt mm -hmm. like a, well, it felt like a colonoscopy. <laughs> it was like <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> and we don't have to go through that when you're using a private lender. Yes. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, now, so what you're saying is when you're borrowing private money, there's no application process. That's right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, when there's a big difference between, you know, the old traditional way of borrowing money is you go to the bank, you talk to Mrs. Banker or Mr. Banker, and you get on your hands and knees and you put your hands underneath your chin and you say, please fund my deal. Please fund my deal. Right. right. But in this world of private money, it's a 180 degree turn. We're not asking for a mortgage, we're offering a mortgage, right? Exactly. And um, would you say having the attitude of being a teacher plays a big part into this as far as teaching people how private money works? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like just that, you know, because having an attitude of a teacher is so important because, you know, you are helping to facilitate a mindset shift, which allows you to be able to. Um, get a lot of these deals and things done because a lot of times, you know, like I said, with our first private lender, it was they had never thought about it. But when we presented like what we were doing in the in the package and showed how it not only benefits us but it benefits them as well, then they they began to look and say, you know, we actually do have access to, mm -hmm. you know, some capital to lend. Right. Um, and so that process was teaching, mm -hmm. you know, them how they can allow their own money to grow <laughs> without mm -hmm. them working for it. Right. Because their money is doing the work. Um, and then also, you know, we are able to use that for rehab or whatever. And um, it, it's just a win win on both sides. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you this question. I got to ask you this question. When you bought that house that you were talking about using private money, how much of your own money did you have to bring to the closing table? Oh, the best part, absolutely nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As in zero? Zero. Never, never was able, were we ever able to do that before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was well, let me ask you this. So you took no money of your own to the closing table. Did you bring any money home from the closing table? Yes, we did. So <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Let me let me get this straight. You you didn't. There was no application process. Oh. The private money is is wired to your uh, real estate attorney. You go to the closing. You take none of your own money to the closing table, and you bring home a check from when you buy the property. How in the world do you do that? Uh, well, exactly. yeah, exactly. This is like I said, it felt like a miracle. Yeah. Yes. So we were able to borrow um, slightly, well, more than what the purchase price was because we we're going to use that money for rehab. And the great thing about this deal is that it did not require much rehab. Yeah. Because he was motivated, <laughs> the seller was motivated, and we were able to close quickly. 
uh, he was um, able to lower the price and we were able to, you know, bring home a paycheck because, you know, like I said, we borrowed just, um, you know, more mm -hmm. than the purchase price. So that money that we brought home, we used for the rehab. And now we have the house on the market about to sell. Yeah. Well, what I, are the numbers? Uh, what are the numbers of this deal? Like, uh, what are you putting it on the market for? How much did you buy it for? Uh, how much was the rehab and what's your anticipated profit? So the, um, the, we purchased it for 200,000, but mm -hmm. it had, the seller had it appraised twice and the appraisal value mm -hmm. was between what? 290 296. and 305. Yeah, 296 and 305. Right. So that was like huge margins. Mm -hmm. And the, again, the profit, excellent property, really not much. I mean, it, it was well-maintained. I mean, the yeah. biggest thing for the rehab was to um, update it but you know in the particular market that we're in it you know we didn't have to go down that road of making everything like brand new everything worked good solid you know floors structure brick you know great um layout and land so we just any little thing we just we get marginal rehab yeah. which mm -hmm. cost us fifteen hundred dollars yeah so we bought it for 195. Well, 200. We, well, yeah, um, but then uh, uh, we had we came home with a check for about five grand, and we we fixed it up with 1500. <laughs> right, and so, wow. but the interesting thing is when we first started with it on the market, this was during the shift of yeah. the the real estate, like you know, so what about seven eight months ago, properties were going well above like what they. They were valued at because of the whole, you know, like scarcity and things like mm -hmm. that. Now that has shifted. <laughs> so we started higher. We started at the appraisal value um, with it being on the market. But again, we have room to come down. Yeah. That's, sure. that's the greatest thing about it. Um, and so we we have a contract looking to close soon. So, yep. yeah, exactly. Wow. That is fantastic. Gerard and Tamika, let's give our listeners and our audience a free gift. I have got, I'm so excited. I recently finished writing my private money guide. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. This money guide will get you on the fast track to getting your own private money. And you can download it at jayconner.com, J A Y. C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide. Again, that website is www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide. Go there to download your money guide and get on the fast track to getting private money. So, um, Tamika, Gerard, have you all learned any lessons as to what you might do different going forward? as you raise more private money, anything that you've learned along the way that you would do a little bit different now than when you started or not really? Um, I think, I don't think that with, in the sense of raising private money, we've had a lot of pitfalls because we, we again, we are in platinum plus. So we've had that guidance, right? So we're not out here like listening over here and then trying to do it. We, we definitely have, um, we're able to bounce deals off of Crystal, you know, during our um, sessions and, you you know, and UJ. So from that perspective, I don't feel like we've encountered like, you know, huge trial and error mm -hmm. because we have that support yeah. from being in the program. Well, I'm so glad you didn't go try to fly an airplane before taking lessons. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Well, I tell you, you all are doing just fantastic. You know, we've been talking about attracting private money because there's no chasing, there's no begging, there's no selling. Um, how do you start a conversation? Let's say you're in a social setting, uh, you're out to dinner, or you know, you're at a networking event or whatever. Uh, or you're talking to, a, you know, somebody in your warm market, as we call it. It's a relative. It's a friend. It's a coworker, whoever. How do you bring it up? How do you start a conversation about private money and what in, and what in the world it is? 
So what I, I typically do and what uh, you and Crystal have taught us uh, is, uh, you know, everybody asks, oh, what do you do? You know, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I, I start off by, you know, introducing myself, you know, my name and ask them what they do. And then normally most people ask, well, what do you do? Well, instead of saying the normal, well, it, I mean, it's not boring, but, you know, I guess if you hear it enough, it's boring to some people. You just say, you know, somebody asks you, what do you do? Normally I would say, oh, I'm an investor. Um, but now I say, well, I teach. Uh, uh, so I, I used to say private lenders, but now I say I teach people, people like me, people like you, how to make high returns of their money better than just about they can get anywhere else. And then they look and you're like, oh, okay, well, tell me about that. And then <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> I say that all. I say that all the time. And there's another way, in addition to that, that I like playing around with on starting a conversation. I love, I love, did you know questions? Yeah, yeah I like did that. you know questions, right? That's right. And so sometimes I'll say, did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money per year tax free? And of course, they're going to not, they're going to not know the answer to that question. They're going to say, well, tell me about that. Of course, what I'm talking about <clears throat> is how people can transfer their retirement funds into a self directed IRA, which we teach people how to do. And then if they if that retirement fund happens to be a Roth IRA, they can lend that out and all the returns that they get on that are tax free. Yeah. So when I say to somebody, did you know there's a way people can earn tax free money, unlimited tax free money every year? Of course, they're going to say no. Well, then my next question is, have you ever heard of self-directed IRAs? Mm. And of course, they're going to say no. So <laughs> that leads to a just a great opening and conversation of what self-directed IRAs are and, um, you know, how that works into, you know, this world of private money. So um, I always I always am interested to hearing how other people start conversations about private money, because after all, this world of private money is a relationship business, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. People give money to people they know, like, and trust. Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? <clears throat> Gerard and Tamika, when would you say is the most dangerous or the worst time to be raising private money? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So the worst right. time. When you need it, when you need it for a deal. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's like when you have a deal and that's the funding. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah. man. Amazing. <laughs> well, Tamika and Gerard, this has been amazing having you on. Uh, what would be any advice, uh, last words, parting comments, any advice that you would give to someone that either wants to raise more private money or they've never raised private money? Um, what advice would you give them? Yeah, so I, I think the, the advice I would give them is to just start. Start talking, start asking questions. Um, and, you know, because a lot of times we we wait for everything to be perfect. And usually that never happens. So to just start by, you know, um, talking and listening you know, to others and how they're doing it and just start and, you know, start where you are. Because, I, you know, I again, our first private lender was a relative, which we wouldn't even have thought they would have, you know, Had became a part. Yeah. yeah, became a part of our program, you know, because we were like, oh, they probably don't have X, Y, and Z. You don't know mm -hmm. until you ask. And when you have the conversation and you put, like Gerard said earlier, you present the opportunity. Right. And and so that's probably one of the biggest takeaways. You you really don't know what people have access to. Yep. You know, you just gotta be brave, put yourself out there, and ask the questions. You're really just building a community of people that you know you you all know each other, and this community can help you, and you help them. That's the whole point. It's a, it's not just a transactional ex exchange. It's a long term relationship. And so you build in your own tribe. So you, in order to do that, you got to put yourself out there and just talk to people. You got it. Tamika, Gerard, thank you so much for joining me here on Raising Private Money. I really appreciate you and congratulations on your success. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank you so much. It. Thank you for having us. You got it. Well, there you have it, my friend, another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And I really appreciate the shares.
Think of someone that you know that would really enjoy and get value from this episode and share it with them. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell uh, so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes as well. And if you're on iTunes, uh, be sure and follow me and Spotify as well. I'm wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And I'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Bye. <laughs>